Hello, in today's Grasshopper tutorial, we will be learning how to make an algorithm that creates stairs between a top curve, a bottom curve, and with any given number of steps. These curves can also be manipulated, which is what makes the design parametric and which what is what makes this software so powerful. All right, so how do we begin? Well, let me just disable this function that I've just created and we'll start from scratch. I already have my top curve and my bottom curve, and I'll just leave those. But we need to import them into Grasshopper using the curve container. We can just right click and set one curve. And in this way, we can bring the top curve and this bottom curve into Grasshopper. But we need to update this bottom curve by resetting one curve and set this bottom curve. Great, now we have these two curves defined in Grasshopper. So we can hide our Rhino version. And that is all we need from Rhino. So we can get our viewport all situated. And let's begin working Grasshopper. So the main node that we're going to be using is tween curves and this will give us our construction curves for the stairs as you can see i can plug in a factor between zero and one and each number will represent a curve somewhere between these two original curves now something to note if i turn my curves on in rhino and I flip one of these, these curves have directionality and it affects how this tween curves operates. So after flipping one of the curves, you can see um, the tween curve has to flip around be before moving from one curve to the other. So you should make sure that your curves are aligned in the correct direction by just typing out flip in Rhino, or you could also flip a curve in Grasshopper. Anyway, to get all of the um, lines, construction lines to create the stairs, we're going to need to give this um, input a range of factors, each factor corresponding to a step. So how does this range uh, node work? By default, it takes in um, a domain from 0 to 1, and so it creates a list of numbers that range from 0 to 1. And by default, it has 10 steps, which means it has 11 values. Um, a step is a gap between two numbers. So there's always one more values created than there are steps. Good to remember. All right. So now that we have our construction curves, we can preview everything else off. But we want to have a little more control of this range. If we plug in, for instance, 12 steps, you'll see that affects the number of stairs we create. Great. So now that we have our construction lines, all we have to do is extrude them up and then loft them together. So we're extruding them to create the vertical portion of the stairs and then lofting them to create the horizontal portion. So to create the vertical portion, we're gonna extrude in the Z direction. How far do we want to extrude? Well, there's an equation for that. To find the height of each stair, you take the um, total height of stairs and you divide it by the number of stairs. So I typed slash slash and that's a easy way of getting a panel that says anything you want it to. Um, anyway, to find the, the total height of the stairs, what we're gonna have to do is take the height of the top curve and subtract away the height of the bottom curve. How do we find the height of the top curve? Well, we need to find its Z coordinate. So we'll use a point on that line. Let's use point on curve to find just any point on this line. And it's, you can see how we can um, adjust where this point is, but it doesn't matter because wherever I move this point to, it's gonna have the same Z coordinate the same height. So if I deconstruct this point, which I've just extracted from the top curve, 
Now I can tell that the Z component is 23. If I do the same by copy and pasting this and plugging it into the bottom curve, you can see that the Z component is negative eight. So all we're gonna have to do is subtract the height of the bottom curve from the height of the top curve and we'll have the total height. As you can see, our result is 31, and that is the height of our staircase. Now we just need to divide the height of the staircase by the number of stairs, which we already have set here. Let's label it. Let's call this number of stairs. Great, it's always good to be clear in your code so that when you go back later, you can quickly understand what you were doing previously. So now that we have calculated the height of each stair, we can plug that into the extrusion distance. And to verify that this is exactly the correct height, we can flip views, maybe view it from the front, and you see that it aligns per each stair aligns perfectly with the one directly above it. Perfect. Okay. And then after you do something new, it's always good to check and make sure everything still adjusts exactly as you would expect. And in this case, it does. Okay, let's loft these curves together to create the flat sections. How are, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're going to want to loft this curve to that curve, this curve to this curve, and so on, all the way up this list. So first, let's extract those curves from these surfaces. So if I use the command deconstruct rep, then I will have extracted for each input surface a list of edges, right? Um, N equals four means that there's four items in each of these lists of edges, which makes sense because each of these surfaces has four distinct edges. So if I take the first edge from every group by using this list item node, what is this list item doing? It's taking in a bunch of lists. See, each of these is a list with four items. And by default, it's returning the zeroth item or the first item. The index is like a, a coordinate system for knowing the position of an item in a list. So by default, we're taking the first item in each of these lists. And as you can see, these edges are lighting up for every surface. What if we take the second item at index one. Great, we've just found one of the edges that we want to loft together. I could copy and paste this and try and find the other. Um, and just through intuition, I think it's gonna be at three. Great, we've got all the curves that we need to loft together. Um, I think that there's a better way of doing this though. Because each list only has four items in it, this list item has this handy feature where you can just add some pluses. And now if I plug in a curve to each of these outputs, you can see that this has the second item in every list and this has the fourth item in every list. Great. Now we're going to need to loft these together. Um, but things are gonna get a little bit complicated here. What does the loft command do specifically? Um, I will show you in Rhino by creating some curves. So if you loft a list of curves together, it doesn't matter how many there are, you, they will be connected in order that they were given um, to create a surface, just like that. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is enter in a bunch of groupings, each containing two curves that we want lofted together. Otherwise, this loft node is not gonna know which two curves we want lofted together. So how do we set up that grouping system? Well, um, first, 
let's do a little maintenance on our lists. You can see in this list, we have an extra curve down here. We don't want that. We're not gonna be lofting this curve anywhere, so we can delete it. How do we do that? We use coal index and we can delete, let's try the last item in the list because we know it's at one end of the staircase. I mean, this is the first item in the list, excuse me. Um, and you'll notice, whoops, we've accidentally deleted everything. That's because these items retained their groupings. So we only have one item in each list. So deleting the first item in each list is deleting everything. We need to flatten this to break down the groupings so that we're only deleting the first item in this one long list. Now let's see what we've got. Oops, we, didn't, we still haven't deleted it. So now we know that it is the last item in the list. So let's highlight these items here. And yes, we have deleted the correct item from this list, but retained all of the others. So now that we know that that was the last item in, in that list, we know that to delete, to delete this very top edge, which also isn't going to be lofted anywhere, we can just delete the first item in this other list. And again, we're going to have to flatten our input. And that can be done there or here or just about anywhere. Um, and now we have these lists where the corresponding items, for instance, the first item in this list, we want to loft to the first item in this list. And that's perfect. Um, because if we now throw these items into their own groups, graft is how we're gonna do that. Now, each item is going to have a grouping around it. We can do that for both of these lists. And so the three numbers before each group are like the title of the group. There are some extra zeros in there. So if we simplify it, we can just see a simpler version of the title of every group. And you can see here, it's a similar indexing system to that of individual items, but it's used for groups. The first group is zero, the second group is one, the third group is two. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. And the reason why this data structure is helpful is that, let's display our data actually. If we have groups that have the same header, those are technically the same group. And what that means is that we can feed all of these curves into one container and now each of these groups will have one item from each of the lists that it, that's feeding into it. And so, so now our loft command knows exactly what needs to be lofted together. So if we just loft these curves together, we could do it like this. Okay, um, it didn't work. And why is that? Well, I'll show you another little trick about loft. Um, so first let's put down some curves. So if I want to loft these together and I choose the same end um, of each of the curves, so ends that line up, then we're gonna get a surface. However, if I choose opposite ends, so these curves are not facing the same direction, we're gonna get this weird um, distortion type thing. So all we have to do, because we're ha one of these curves is clearly flipped, is just flip all of the curves in one of these lists, and then plug it back in. Oh no, um, we need to press shift, to plug it in, but now we have too many curves in each group, so we can undo this wire by pressing control. Great. So now we have defined our function. Let's just test it. Um, great. 
everything seems to be working. But it's a little bit messy. I have all of this uh, code. I don't necessarily need to access it all. I can delete my panels. But how can I consolidate this code here into just one function like I had up here? Well, that's actually quite simple. Um, if you select everything that performs just one task, just like this, I'm being very uncareful right now, um, just for demonstration. Um, I, I'll get a cluster that takes in the inputs that it had um, and outputs to any wire that was connected to that cluster of, of um, nodes. So if I explode this cluster, I get back what I had only a little bit stretched out. It's a slight bug here. Okay, but how do we tailor this cluster to look exactly how we want it to? Well, first of all, it had all those unnecessary inputs because we haven't consolidated our inputs. So if I place down some curves, and it's not gonna work for a second, so bear with me, because there's no there are no curves set here. I'm about to right click and reset these curves. Um, then I've consolidated all of these wires into nodes that only take one input, and that is key. I'll have to do the same thing for the number of stairs by using a number container. And let's just label this number container a little more descriptively, number of stairs. Great. And so now we only have three wires feeding into the cluster that we're gonna be creating and one wire feeding out. Actually, that's not true. This is our output. We have no wires feeding out. Let's attach a brep to the output. A brep is a category that contains surfaces and poly surfaces, in case you're wondering. Um, and we can preview everything off except our final brep output. And good thing we did, because I'm now realizing we forgot to include our vertical extrusions to our output. Great, so now we've consolidated our outputs and let's put them all through one wire. Now, if we perform the cluster again, making sure that there's only three wires feeding in, only one wire coming out, and making sure that all of the input nodes are co correctly labeled, if we cluster it, you'll notice we have this convenient little function now that has a top curve, a bottom curve, and a number of stairs. And for the rest of your design career, you will easily be able to make stairs between two curves by implementing this function. Another cool thing is that once you've made it and labeled it, stairs between curves, then you can look it up. Stay Stairs between, oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, here it is, stairs between curves. Great. Um, where is it plugged into? It's already plugged in. Uh, it, it's plugged in all the way up here because the default node, the one we just looked up, was already plugged in. So it actually retains its inputs if the original version still has inputs. So if we don't want that to happen. So you'll notice this is the one that uses capitalization. Um, so that's the one we, that we've just changed stairs because we have a bunch of these stairs between curves clusters now that we can look up. But we'll use the capitalized one and it has no inputs. Fantastic. Um, it's all ready to go. And that is all about making algorithms in Grasshopper. Thank you.